So you know how sometimes in the game and marketing material for Battlefield, the text just sort of goes ch -ch. It just has that like subtle but really useful sort of light glitchy, just that ch -ch. That's what this video is about. I'm just calling this the Battlefield text shift. It's not quite a glitch, it's, it's just a little shift. And it's super easy to create individual Resolve completely for free. Let me show you how. I'm here in DaVinci Resolve on the edit page and this is that example I just showed you. It does that quick and then both above and below. It's cool. And I'm going to start completely from scratch. I'm gonna right click on our media pool, go to timeline, create a new timeline. You can name this whatever you want. And it's always good to double check. If you uncheck use project settings, you'll have control over the custom format. I'm gonna make sure this is just a standard full HD, 30 frames a second and click okay. And then here we have our blank timeline. And I'm gonna make sure my effects library is open. Come down to effects and grab this fusion composition, drag it right to the timeline. And that's good. You could also grab the text plus node and start there, but we're gonna end up in the fusion page anyway. So I'm just starting with this fusion composition, um, which I am then going to press this button down here to open up the fusion page. And fusion page basics as always as well. We have our little node viewer down here and it does start you with this one media out. Anything we do in fusion, we're gonna plug into that media out. It'll send it back to the edit page. So we're gonna start just by clicking this button to create a text plus node over here. I'm gonna immediately type that into media out so we see it here. And I'm gonna type in this text, just battlefield. I'm gonna pull up size a little bit, just so we have plenty to work with. And I, I did this in example, I used a slightly different font. I'll try it with this one here. Um, but one thing I am going to do, because I do like the natural stretched look of the battlefield font a bit, I'm going to create a transform node. I pulled up this search menu, by the way, by pressing shift space and then typing in transform. Click enter, that adds it into our chain here. And I'm going to pull up aspect just a little bit. So this is actually a little taller. Make sure it still feels a little natural. That's good. That's what it was. That's what we got. Nice. And then coming out of this, we're also going to create another transform node. And this will be where we do our main effect. And this transform node is all of our standard transform options. You can just move its position, its size, its rotation, all of that. And really what this effect is, is nudging the center, nudging this main position data. But what we're going to do is that we're actually going to restrict the area that this transform node is acting on in the scene. And we're gonna do that with masking. So before I nudge any of the parameters in this inspector, I am going to zoom in just a little bit and I'm going to click this rectangle here to create a rectangle mask. That will be this node. And with that selected, we'll see our little green outline, even if it isn't connected yet. But we are going to connect that to this transform node in this blue input. Blue in the fusion is always a mask input, maybe 99% maybe of the time. And then we can select this rectangle and just pull at the bounds and change this, it has its own position as well. And we can move this around anywhere we want. But what we're going to immediately do is just pull this down till it is just affecting the uh, bottom of these words there, just that little slice. And then if we go back to the transform node and shift this center, let's zoom in a little bit more, check it out. We shift the center and it's just that bottom slice that is being moved. We can move this any which way we want it. If you shift the Y position, it'll do some pretty funky things because you can actually bring that down and duplicate this font based on transform. It's interesting how, how it's processing this, but, but it's pretty cool. But we're gonna zero this out again. And we're just worried right now about this X position. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna make that center. We're gonna come forward a little bit. We are going to set a keyframe on this first position, come forward a few frames, set another keyframe that pulls that just out of sync like that. And then another few keyframes back to our standard 0.5. And if we play that back, it'll do something, but we're, we're still gonna work with it. We'll see there. If we play, you'll see it slides over, but you see the full movement. It sort of slides and comes back. So what we're gonna do, is in that transform selected, we're gonna open up our spline viewer. And like I've talked about before in these three dots here, I have show only selected tool selected um, so that if you had multiple things keyframed in your scene and this was on, you have to click on the actual node you want focus on. I think it cleans things up a little bit. 
in busy scenes. But I have that transform node selected. I'm gonna click displace, and then you see those three nodes. Now, even though we move it forward and then back, you don't see a super standard up and then down, and that is because uh, on the center parameter, it is modifying the X and the Y in one value. So this is a uh, path. It's a little tricky, but all you need to know is that um, you won't super see the move reflected in the spline like you might in other places. But here's the magic. I am going to select these keyframes and click this first little right angle shape down here. And then, hey, instead of a straight line connecting these, we now have these right angle steps. And if we scrub, you'll see what this is doing. It is holding that first value until it reaches that second one, then it's jumping, and then a few frames later, it is jumping back. And that gets us that glitchy motion we really want. Awesome. And that's the heart of the effect. I'm gonna go uh, one more step and show how I did that uh, second shift as well, but I'm gonna walk through that just to show a, a slightly larger example. So what we are going to do here is actually come forward a little bit, and in the spline viewer, I'm going to select all of these nodes, copy, click on the spline to set another little keyframe there, and then paste those. And you'll see we have a very interesting movement here, but that just means we need to select these two nodes, and click that right click again. It'll hold these right clicks here. So now all this is really doing is it is going to make that motion and then repeat it. And then I'm actually going to take this transform. We are already keyframed with this rectangle, copy and paste. And if you hold this transform and hold shift, if you mouse over this path, you'll see it turns blue and yellow, let go, and it has automatically connected it in there. And this we're gonna move the rectangle up so it's the top bit and then check out the spline viewer. Uh, we had that duplicate as well. We're going to delete that first little glitch. And on the second glitch, it has this keyframe, but it doesn't have the parameters when you paste it. I'm not sure if that's intended or a bug, but you will have to re-enter these. So this before, if we come to transform one, you'll see that we are going to 5.05. .05. And we want this to shift the opposite way. So in the second transform, instead of 5.05, .05, we're going to go to Point four nine five, And then here you'll see on that timing, they shift in opposite direction. And I'm going back to this first keyframe, making sure that this stays on 0.5 so it stays. And that last keyframe, back to 0.5. Selecting all of those, making sure we've got that right angle where we want it, great. So it just pops again. So we duplicate that, so. And I'm gonna nudge that timing just a frame. So now we have Bottom glitch, top glitch, cool. And it's as easy as that for a really simple uh, shuttle shift or minor glitch. And while this is a good use case, the important thing to remember is that this functionality of limiting effects based on masking, that is all over the place in Fusion and it's super powerful. You can have wild effects going on and the ability to limit where on screen those effects apply it's really big. So if this method was brand new to you, I urge you to dive in deeper and start experimenting. You never know what you'll come across. Thanks, I'll see you next time.